Judge declaring a mistrial in the Flint Water Bellwether trial. It comes after months of testimony and jurors struggled to make a decision during deliberations. They were tasked with deciding whether two engineering firms did enough to treat Flint's highly corrosive water. TV5's James Felton has more on that judge's decision and why jurors said they could no longer deliberate. Today, jurors involved in the months-long Flint Water Bellwether trial told the judge they had reached their limit. In court, the federal judge in Ann Arbor read the note he received from the eight-member panel. For the physical and emotional health of the jurors, we don't believe we can continue with further deliberations. Further deliberations will only result in stress and anxiety with no unanimous decision without someone having to surrender their honest convictions solely for the purpose of returning a verdict. The jury was trying to decide if four children should be compensated for alleged negligence by two engineering companies during Flint's water crisis. The children say they sustained injury from exposure to Flint's lead tainted water in 2014 and 2015. Based on the note, the attorney for the engineering companies implored the judge to declare a mistrial. An attorney representing the four children asked the judge to conduct an individual inquiry of each juror to find out what the mental and physical health problems are. The attorney also asked the judge to allow jurors to reach a verdict if seven out of eight can agree on a decision. The judge denied those requests, saying that individual interviews would coerce jurors and that a seven out of eight verdict would not be appropriate. He went on to say this is a jury, not a focus group. The judge declared a mistrial. In doing so, he told the court this jury may be the most dedicated group of jurors to ever serve in the Eastern District of Michigan. James Felton, WNEM, TV5. And let's take a look back at the timeline of the Flint water crisis. In April of 2014, Flint switched to the Flint River as its water source in a cost-saving move by the city's state-appointed emergency manager. In the months after, residents complained about its odor, taste, and appearance and reported rashes, hair loss, and other health concerns. In September of 2015, a group of doctors urged the city to stop using the Flint River after finding high levels of lead in children's blood. Blood. State regulators insist the water was safe, but several days later, then Governor Rick Snyder pledged to take action. Fast forward to January of 2016, then Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette launched an investigation into the Flint water crisis that led to charges for several state and local officials. But in June of 2019, prosecutors dropped charges against eight people in the scandal and pledged to start the investigation from scratch. In August of 2020, the state and the Flint residents harmed by lead-tainted water reached a $600 million settlement after more than two years of negotiations. This June, the Michigan Supreme Court wiped out newer charges against former state health department manager Nancy Peeler, aide to former Governor Rick Snyder, Richard Baird, and former health director Nick Lyon. The move came after a decision on the one-person grand jury used to indict them. Rick Snyder's legal team said in response they would be moving immediately to get all criminal charges against Snyder dismissed. And we will have much more reaction to the mistrial of the Flint Bellwether trial tonight on TV5 News at 6.